Welcome to our, our fifth BD sessions, uh, which hopefully has been helping you all get through lockdown. Not long to go. Uh, got my haircut booked in for next week, so it uh, should be a big event. And uh, hopefully you're all, all set to um, start responsibly enjoying the, uh, the outdoors uh, and the pubs. Um, in the meantime, uh, we've got a great lineup for you today. And um, yeah, just as a quick introduction, it would be myself and, and uh, Rich uh, from founders of the BD100. Uh, also, as, as a quick intro to myself, Jody Osman, uh, I have my first LinkedIn job update in 15 years. Um, so, uh, which is, is exciting news for us. Uh, uh, some of you may know already, but I launched Upfront Business Development back in 2005, uh, before LinkedIn uh, existed. And um, we, we became part of the Propeller Group uh, in, in 2018. And um, I guess we've been sort of working hard to, to sort of bring together a, a super powered offer of PR content uh, and business development, which we, we rebranded uh, today uh, as uh, under the Propeller Group brand. Um, so helping sort of unify all of that and also giving us a bit of a, a clearer focus on, on sort of some of the, the great expertise we've got across the group to sort of bring that together. So um, it's been exciting for me. I'm, I'm taking on a uh, group director of growth role uh, across the group. So uh, yeah, exciting times for me. So it means I get to announce uh, Jody Osman from uh, propeller group rather than uh, upfront. So uh, big day for me and hopefully I can give you all a, a, a cheers over, over a drink uh, as we're on this session. Um, and also I've got Rich on board who was actually, um, our, our sort of journey started a long time ago as one of our first upfront clients. So uh, Rich, I, I don't know if you want to sort of pick up the story. Yeah, evening everyone. Thanks so much all for, for joining. Um, yeah, I, I don't often get to say that I was a client at any point in career because I think business development people are always just hunting for the new client. But yeah, when when Jody got in touch with me when I was at an agency in 2006, I think it was really clear from the early early days that we we both sort of spoke the same language of business development. And I think over the 15 years or so that we've known each other, I think that language is now really, really developing. Um, I think when we launched the BD100, I remember saying that, you know, we're stronger together as a community and that phrase exists for a good reason. And look at us all now, you know, we've, we've touched, uh, we've brought a lot of people together through lockdown and we're a really cohesive force. One of the speakers talked about being masters of reinvention and I think that is so true. Our business developers really are. And you make your own luck. That's another thing that we heard uh, during uh, BD sessions during lockdown, and I think that's true. And last year, we had the, the England rugby leadership coach, Frank Dick, OBE, talk about us being mountain people. And, you know, if we can overcome this obstacle that we've been thrown here, we can overcome anything. And, you know, during lockdown, we've seen a magazine launch from Jason. Um, I've read a book, Punk CX, and I've got Adrian Swinsco on, on tonight. You know, I've... We've all broadened our horizons and I think we've all come closer together. So this is just the beginning of it all. Um, yeah, so enjoy tonight and thanks again for tuning in. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, I think some great, great thoughts of some of the sessions that we, we've had over the last uh, uh, few months. Uh, I think over the since we first kicked our session off in, in April, we've had um, 500 business developers and, and agency leaders sort of join us for these sessions. So it's been great to sort of bring the community together and I think really put sort of business development in the spotlight. And um, I guess today we, we, we sort of extend that with a great panel we've, we've got coming together um, with, with Pedro Martins, who's growth director of, of Total Media, also chair of the IPA New Business Group. Um, oddly though, I don't think Pedro's ever made the BD100. So uh, <laughs> when we go uh, live with the voting, please all vote for Pedro. <laughs> and uh, I think we've also got Jemai Moniz, who has actually featured in the BD100 uh, two years running and um, also did, did a great interview with us uh, just, uh, just before she went on maternity leave, actually, and, and was handling sort of pitches and an interview with us and gave us some great insights back then. And brilliant to, uh, to, to get Jemima back uh, on the panel tonight. And then we also have Chris Ellis uh, from Belron, uh, who's, who's coming together to give us the brand perspective. So I think really interesting sort of format and audience we should have tonight. Uh, all of that will be hosted uh, by Ali and Brownwell from Propella uh, and our content team. Um, and, and just as, as a reference point, we, we're going to, it's been brilliant to do these sessions over, over lockdown. We're going to be taking a break over the summer. So allow you all to have a rest on the screen time uh, in August. Uh, and then sort of come back with some some something big and exciting in September, and 
we gear up for the next BD100. Um, I'll now pass you over to uh, Ali and uh, look forward to a good session. Thank you so much, Jody. Round of applause for Jody and Rich, everybody. Well, they didn't seem to enjoy that. As some people know, so um, that is what I say every time at these BD sessions. Uh, is it a tired joke? Yes. Will I stop saying it? No. So what we do is for a round of applause, which you do the British Sign Language round of applause, which you shimmy your hands here. So thank you very much, Jody and Rich, for that wonderfully inspiring and actually deceptively romantic start to proceedings. Thank you. So, I'm Ali Woods. I work at Propeller Group. I'm also a comedian. See if you can spot it. Um, you're right. We are now Propeller Group. Uh, was I promoted? No. In fact, they're trying to demote me to purely just on Zoom, even when we're back in the office. Is that because I'm annoying? Who knows? We'll find out. But enough about me. I am here to host what is going to be a fantastic BD sessions. Welcome, one and all. Thank you so much for coming. I see some familiar faces back, so that's great to see that we're getting some returning visitors. What we have, as Jody said, is three brilliant speakers who will each be giving eight minutes of wonderful insight. And uh, after that, we will have a Q and A. Now, once we've done with the speakers, we'll be handing over to the incomparable, the fantastic, the enigmatic, the wonder of the Wirral himself, Brownwell Johnson. Brownwell, do you want to talk quickly about what the Q and A is going to entail and how the audience can get involved? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ali. I'm um, looking forward to taking the role of interviewer once again. It's one I enjoy as a former journalist. But really, I just want to be a conduit for questions from, from you, the, you know, the guests at the session. Um, I've got plenty of stuff I'd love to dig into with the, the panel. But you know, I'd like you guys and girls out there to take the opportunity to ask the questions you want to put forward. So use the chat box, you know, type in your question in the chat box and don't wait till the end of, of the speaking part, you know, type them in as soon as they occur to you and we'll try and uh, channel as many of those questions through as we can in the q and time we have allotted. But, um, you know, it is your opportunity. It is the last session uh, before we have a summer break. So, so make the most of it. That's what I'd say. Thank you. Propeller Group Director of Content there, Bramwell Johnson. Fantastic. Round of applause for him. He never gets one. So there you go, Bramwell. As a treat for the last one of these for a while. And that's all you're getting. So uh, enough of me wittering on, I'm going to introduce you to our first fantastic speaker. His name is Pedro Martins and he's Chief Growth Officer at longstanding Propeller Group client, Total Media. And he's also the chair of the IPA Business Group. He was roasted originally by Jody for never being in the Biz BD100. Will that change? Let's see how good the speech is. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome Pedro Martins. Pedro, when you're ready, please take it away. Lovely. Thank you, Ali. And uh, thank you for the invite, uh, Jody, Brandon and Ali. Uh, it's co-chair, and you did have my other co-chair on here, Laura, the other day, I think, or the other week. And Jemima was actually ex-chair. So there's a lot of chairs around today of the IPA New Business Group. Now, um, I think uh, I've only got eight minutes, so I'm going to keep it brief. But I thought a useful starting point will be at the start of the year. So if we go back to sort of January, February, March, when things were in a completely different place, and COVID-19 wasn't really our problem yet. Um, as an agency, we started off strong. Uh, in those short three months, we converted six pieces of new business. And so everything was looking promising. The funnel was strong. We were in a really good place. Come end of March, and things were different, very different. And I think um, the clients pulled their budgets, a new business funnel slowed. Uh, we, we had to go through furloughs. And I think for us, uh, it really impacted what we were doing. And so, um, for, we, well, I don't know how much you know about Total Media, but we're a behavioural planning media agency, so our core focus is around behaviour. And because of that, actually, um, we were quite fortunate because I think it kept us front of mind as clients wanted to know more about consumer behaviour as it was evolving and changing. And in fact, we have a separate business, uh, which is a, an inside business called Behave, and they saw sort of a fourfold increase in inquiries during this time that we've been in. But as, as time went and it got harder and harder to win your business, to keep the funnel coming in, and I'm sure most of you have felt that, um, we started to look at clients, could we engage our clients more? So we started to provide a lot more insight in what we were seeing. You know, one of the things that was clear is that people were spending more time at home. So we had a look at consumer behavior in the house and for our FMCG brands, it was an obvious time to promote 
more time in front of the TV, people cooking at home. And so we ran a number of campaigns and um, already the results, which normally you see with TV take a bit of time, they were coming through almost immediately. And I think that's highlighted the, also the relevance of people looking online and doing online shopping more. And we were front of mind. And then um, one of the other things that I'm going to talk about more in the Hover Agency is around anxiety. For us, this period of anxiety and this issue of anxiety comes with a massive, it's a massive worry. And it's when COVID first started, it was about not really understanding, feeling somewhere strange, everything was different. And we really wanted that feeling of knowing what certainty and i think um some of our clients that worked in our advantage so people like britbox we um promoted more of the nostalgic box sets you know a sense of normality and reality but the reason i want to talk about anxiety because that's important for us and our clients so as agencies but also the brands we represent so you've heard recently that um shopping behavior has improved there's lots of people spending lots of money ey suggested that consumers uh, we're showing remarkably optimistic behaviours um, and spending consistently. But uh, there's a slight fear, a nagging fear in the back of my mind and our business is that that's going to be very short lived. Because actually, in the background, there's still a huge amount of furloughs that have happened. And there, in October, when furlough stops, we're likely to see more redundancies if things haven't moved. And chances are they're not going to move that dramatically within that space. So um, on that point of anxiety, the ONS conducted a survey and they said that over 25 million in the UK aged over 16 are highly anxious. That's double the number recorded in 2019. So it's a huge amount of people. And why that's important is because of three things really. And actually behavioral science gives us clues. And there's three things I want to cover off just before my time's up. The first one is around mood repair. So first of all, anxiety is a feeling that we're out of control. So in order to gain and regain a sense of control, consumers do what they can do to control situations. And that normally manifests itself in uh, splurging, buying more items and buying luxury items or buying items that align with their values. So it's a great opportunity now if your brands are not on TV or not advertising to, to be advertising and to really push their core values so they align with a core audience that they're trying to attract. But again, what we've seen over time is this sort of behavior is short lived. The second point is pain avoidance. Now, as human nature, we either move towards pleasure or move away from pain. So we either do something we really want to do or do something to avoid something we don't want to do. And what's happening, we're more in the pain avoidance stage at the moment. People are trying to avoid any sort of risky behavior. So, and that's true as agencies. I mean, certainly the research I've seen by a number of different intermediaries is that um, clients are more likely to stay with their current agencies They're more likely to ask their current agencies to support them on other projects. So it's a great opp opportunity for agencies to talk to their clients and ask, how else can we help you? How else can we support you? We're not supporting you yet. So that's, and, but it's also true about for clients. I mean, for clients generally and for brands, you need to reassure your clients that you're a, risk, a less riskier choice than the competition. And that leads me on to my final point, which is around behavioral immune system, which is quite a quirky term, but it was coined by Mark Shaler, who's a professor at British Columbia uh, University. And basically it's an unconscious response to conform to social norms. So uh, we've all heard about herd behavior and it, realistically it's, it's better to be safe than sorry principle. And that's what people are doing. They're, they're adjusting their behavior based on what they're seeing in the market. So as a brand, Trust Pilot, it's a great time to promote your score on there, to promote that other people are buying your brand, are buying your products, are buying your services. But um, as an agency, it's reflected in our behaviors. So obviously, if we win more business, that's going to say a lot to clients out there who are looking to change their current agency. A bit isn't always easy. So therefore, for me, a sort of three things that I think agencies should be considering from a, a brand perspective for their clients and brands they work for, but also internally. So for us as a business, Really, it's been about um, doing all we can to drive new business, but also an opportunity to take stock, take stock internally about what we're doing, who we're targeting, the teams that we have in place, the technology, the sources, everything that we do internally. Is it right for what clients need right now across the next few months? But is it also right for the next 12 months to three years? Because I think it's going to get tougher before it gets better. And although we're seeing green shoots, I don't think personally that's going to last. Um, that's it. I think I've done my eight minutes. That is perfect. 
Thank you so much. Round of applause for Pedro Martins at Total Media, everybody. Appreciate it. Behavioral immune system. I'm going to be using that term in pubs as soon as we can go back to sound smart. So thank you Put from a personal level for that, Pedro. Appreciate it. Uh, that is the first of our fantastic speakers. Um, I hope you enjoyed him. He'll be in the Q&A section in the second half. If you've got any questions on anything Pedro has said, if you'd like to hear more, please do drop them in the chat, as I've just mentioned there. But without further ado, let's move on to our fantastic second speaker. Her name is Jemima Moneys. She's Deputy Managing Director at Adam and Eve DDB. Jemima, when you are ready, please take it away. Hi everyone and thank you Jodie and Co for inviting me to take part in this session. Um, I've got tomorrow off but my kids are still going to nursery so this is like a really fun way to spend my last call of the week. Um, I was just going to talk a little about some of the lessons um, we've learnt during the course of lockdown um, which we believe have changed or will change our agency and ways of working for the better. Um, so first off and something we learnt quite early on was the importance of company culture um, it sounds pretty obvious, but what I mean is having a culture and a working environment that you can harness virtually. Uh, so, for example, dialing up individual and collective achievements um, to replace emotional in-person interactions we would normally have in the office. Uh, lots of fun on social, so everyone gets to see what everyone is up to. Um, virtual coffee mornings with groups from the agency, so you get a chance to chat with people you may not work with directly, um, but are used to chatting to at the actual coffee bar. Um, lots of online events to replace physical ones, that sort of thing. Um, we became adamant everywhere. Um, in fact, we still are. Um, and with just a name change, suddenly everyone felt part of this new agency, uh, this virtual Adam and Eve. Um, and the Adam and Everywhere gang set about helping everyone stay motivated um, with lots of tips and tricks and a weekly newsletter. Um, my favourite part of this is um, Parent Island Discs, which is basically interviews with um, agency parents um, Parents in, the, parents in the agency about life in lockdown uh, with little ones uh, or not so little ones. Um, it's been such a lovely way to get to know uh, the other side of people you work with you wouldn't normally see. Um, I'm sure lots of agencies have examples like this, even better ones, um, which have really helped to make people feel part of their community despite being miles apart. Um, I think the challenge actually will be when we start to go back into the office uh, and some people are still mainly working from home and others are dipping in and out. Um, how do you create a sort of half in half out culture? Uh, this is something we'll need to look at closely um, and take the best bits of both sides of the fence. Um, so next up is a new business specific one and it's about getting comfortable with virtual pitching uh, because it's probably here to stay in some form. Um, I guess one of the few good things about lockdown and being forced to work remotely is that it's shown that we can do it and we can do it effectively. Uh, which suddenly opens up a whole world of opportunity, particularly for global business. Um, but I think, and I hope others agree, that pitching remotely, where every person is a part, is not very easy. Um, for a start, um, on the client side of things, uh, chemistry meetings are as much about chemistry as they are credentials. Um, and it's not as easy to get a sense of this through a screen. Um, and when they're held in your office, which more than often they are, it gives clients an insight into the culture of the agency they're potentially buying into. Um, on the flip side, seeing people in their own environment can actually break down barriers that office settings can put up. So one minute you've never met and the next you're in their kitchen or bedroom uh, with, ki uh, with kids and cats and dogs in tow. Um, but what it has done is force us to become more creative in our approach to meetings uh, to show what we are like as people and how we like to work. Um, we've really had to think about how we can use the limitations of lockdown to show extra uh, creativity. Um, I was talking to Martin Jones at the AR the other day and he sat in lots of virtual meetings recently and some of the ideas he's seen from agencies are really interesting. Uh, different Zoom backdrops for different creative territories, asking clients to bring a household object to the meeting to vote, not entirely sure why, um, sending pitch parcels to clients' homes, stuff like that. Um, and on the agency side of things, um, it's hard to keep momentum remotely. Uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for huddling around a pitch deck the night before, uh, eating and drinking lots of Haribo and coffee. Um, so never has it been more important to have a brilliant pitch team behind the pitch team. So a kick-ass project manager who is three steps ahead of everyone else, um, an awesome account handler who is obsessing about every meeting, and a brilliant new business lead who's driving things forward. Um, so hopefully being forced to think and act better than we ever have done before will stick with us going forward, um, whatever the pitch scenario. Um, and my third and final lesson is about remote working and how it will evolve into flexible working. 
Um, I'm not sure about all you guys, but I really miss the office. I miss going to work and my coffee ritual. Um, I even miss my district line commute, which sounds ridiculous, um, but it was really the only time of the day that I didn't have to speak to anyone. Um, but working from home, as everyone will have experienced, has its advantages. I was speaking to some of our planners the other day and they found the space to think absolutely game changing. Um, same with creatives. Um, and it just seems ridiculous that we expected them to be able to do this in a busy office. Um, I guess everyone's got their own reason for wanting to embrace a more flexible way of working. Um, for me personally, I, and I imagine lots of parents, um, the idea that in the future when my kids go to school, I might be able to do most of the pickups and then log on later is brilliant. Um, I realised the other day that school pickups are actually three hours before my current nursery pickup, which is terrifying. Um, I mean, uh, our agency is already very flexible for parents in terms of working from home and job shares, etc. But lockdown has shown that we can approach this on a whole different scale. Um, but there are aspects of working face to face that play an important part in what we do. The random opportunities that arise from bumping into someone at the printer, learning from overhearing conversations, creative ideas from random chats and just having a laugh and leaning on each other when we need to. Um, I guess then rather than think in absolutes, when we return to the office in whatever way that is, we will really need to think about how we use the work environment to facilitate a more flexible way of working that plays on the strengths of both the home and work office setup, um, which personally I find a really exciting opportunity. Um, so that's it from me. Nothing really groundbreaking and I'm sure most agencies are doing and thinking about all of this, uh, but hopefully there's been some food of thought in there. Um, and hopefully that was under eight minutes. It was fantastic. Thank you so much, Jemaya Mullins, everybody. Round of applause. Appreciate your insights on the agency. Um, just so you know, I don't run a totalitarian eight minute policy as two speakers have ended in fear, but just so you know, we are trying to keep it to eight minutes. And if they do get over, I will personally report them to LinkedIn. So um, outside of that, thank you so much for that. I personally am not looking back to the office, don't really get on with any of my work there, so that's good. Um, but appreciate that a lot of people are looking to get back into that office environment and that is exciting to think that it might not be far away. So finally, our final fantastic speaker is Chris Ellis, who is Group Digital Marketing Manager of Belron. Now just to give you a bit of context on Belron, as it might be an alien name to you, Belron is actually the world's largest vehicle glass repair and replace company and it's known in the UK as Autoglass, serving 18 million customers in 2019 in 39 countries. And what Chris is going to talk about today is the fact that it comprises many medium-sized business units, each with significant autonomy, autonomy. So this presents a challenging environment for the small central marketing teams and also a challenging thing for me personally to say. So Chris, when you are ready, please take it away. Thanks very much. Um, great to be here. This is, so this is my first uh, BD session. Um, so yeah, thanks for the invitation. Um, I, and I've actually done some business development in, uh, in the past in the various agency roles. I kind of wish there was something like this available at the time. It would have been uh, fantastic. Um, and I can only really speak right now from my point of view, um, working in Belron, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of very different uh, organizations out there, big international uh, companies, um, small businesses and whatever but but from our point of view we work as a uh i guess a federation of medium-sized businesses and and as uh, ali alluded to that that does present challenges for us but it also presents challenges for agencies that want to work with us um and we, we get some uh, well i i get like most people uh, requests every day many many emails linkedin requests and things saying hey i'd love to chat to you about this or is such and such going and, and often they're just irrelevant uh because you know i just give you an example i had somebody saying um how does your company or how, how are you how are you getting on with conversion rate optimization um and the answer is well I'm, I'm not really getting on with it that's just not what i do i've got other people that do that in other parts of the business in other countries i don't do it there's no point in speaking to me but I, I honestly haven't got the time to have that conversation 30 times a day, um, which is normally followed up with who should I speak to? And again, I just haven't got the, the time to be able to introduce new people to one of my colleagues when it might be appropriate, when they might have already have just embarked on a procurement uh, you know, um, 
procurement operation. So to me, it's all, it's all, about, uh, it's all about context and understanding the context first. That's, that's super important as far as I'm concerned. Um, just wanted to go back to the sort of uh, the theme of um, you know what we've learned over the last few months over these last crazy months and, and what might happen next what, one thing that we've certainly learned is that we are a lot more agile than we ever realized and I think that's something agencies have to really get their heads around we we've done things um, on our own or, or with agencies so much quicker than we ever thought possible uh, one of my colleagues in the Netherlands has just um, produced, scripted, edited, post-produced uh, an ad from start to finish, two weeks, it costs 10,000 euros. You know, this this is incredible stuff. I'm not saying we can continue at that pace forever. Some, something's going to have to give. But when you've done it once, you suddenly realize that, you know, things like this are possible. It's, it's maybe the same with media buying. Um, you know, we've 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 had we've gone from booking our media, in some cases, kind of six to nine months in advance, right through to in the in the last few weeks, we've been changing almost daily. We've we've uh, you know started a campaign on a Sunday night, and, and changed the media plan for the Tuesday. Um, that that's you know, maybe and again maybe that can't continue. Maybe it's uh, exceptional circumstances. But because it's been shown to be possible, it it, it shows that uh, you know these are the th these are the things that if an agency can help us in in that kind of way, uh, it's going to work a lot better in the future. Um, looking at looking ahead, um, it's kind of interesting to me. We we don't really know where the market is right now. Um, we're still in a recovery phase. Um, you know, our, our, fortunately, our market is is growing. You know, we're, we're not uh, we're not quite in the same situation as, say, some of the travel companies or, or um, restaurants and things. Our, our market has certainly dipped, but it's certainly coming back again. But we don't know where that recovery is going. Is it going to go up to 100% of what it was? Is it going to 100 or is it going to sell out um, something below that? So, trying to understand baselines, trying to understand effectiveness. Uh, you know where are we versus where we should be? It's it's really really difficult, and, and so trying to get uh, trying to understand campaign effectiveness is really really dif difficult. Um, we're also like a lot of companies, are, uh, as just been mentioned, um, you know people are still on furlough in some places. Um, we've we've actually had to uh, say goodbye to a few people. We've had, we've had some changes in some of our business units. So people are working really, really hard, and that means they've got to focus on the priorities. So if something isn't a priority, it, you know, there's there's no point in pushing it. It's not going to become a priority if it's not something we've got on our on our radar right now. Um, Q4 is an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, we're talking about Christmas uh, campaigns. Um, I mean, we don't tend to do Christmas as such, be, being not a retail organisation, it, it tends to be a little bit quieter for us. But right now, we know that media is um, media market is quite soft. You know, there's some great deals to be had, uh, particularly when when you get uh, into direct negotiations. Um, but clearly, that's going to change, and, and everybody is going to pile back into the market. So, really, we you know we're th we are thinking right now about what does our Q4 look like. Um, should we be hedging things right now? Should we be still trying to hang on to that uh, super agile planning and buying that, that I talked about earlier? Or, or should we be going the reverse and uh, trying to lock in those great deals right now? Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty around that. Um, and I think just just finally, uh, just, just try, um, really echoing what uh, Jemima was saying about what have I missed? Um, I kind of miss the office a bit. I quite like working from home as well. But what I really miss is uh, is, is conferences and random conversations and just meeting people. It's interesting. The, the whole reason that I'm on this call is that I was referred by Dan Brain, who um, most of you probably know from Madfest, um, uh, who referred me to Jody, who then set me up with a uh, conversation with Jess, and we decided, yeah, it would be worth having a further conversation. 
that kind of thing's pretty difficult when you're never meeting people face to face. So um, from a business development point of view, I, I think uh, something pretty radical needs to be to be done in terms of how do we actually how do we start those random conversations. Um, you don't know where they're going to go, but if they never start, then it's going to be pretty difficult. So um, yeah, that that was just kind of a brief jaunt through some of my <laughs> very random thoughts around what it's been like over the few months uh, we've just had and what's likely to come next and what's changed. How was that? Brilliant. Thank you so much, Chris. Round of applause for Chris Ellis, everybody, at Belron. Thank you so much for your insights. A bit personally aggrieved that you said, how are you finding conversion rate optimization is not one of your favorite questions. It's one of my best chat up lines. <laughs> I'll just take a note of that for later. But thank you so much. That has been our fantastic speakers with their own eight minutes of insights. But now we're going to move on to the second section, which is our Q&A. Thank you so much to those of you who have chucked in some questions in the chat there. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my fantastic partner in crime, Mr. Bramwell Johnson. Bramwell. Thank you. Yeah, keep checking those questions in. Um, hopefully, we're going to start talking a bit more about acting and not reacting. And, and you know, hopefully, we're thinking as, a, as an industry, as a clients and as agencies about how we move on from the stabilizing part uh, we've done during the pandemic. And then that's what we kind of want to get into in some of these questions. But uh, I'm going to take uh, my privilege as a moderator to ask the first question myself. Um, and so it's for everybody on the, on the panel, but how are agencies going to prove most useful as lockdown and wines for their clients? Because I, you know, we've been through what I call the TLC stage, the tender loving care stage, where you wrap your arms tight around your clients and, and obviously try and give them a lot of love and attention and as much, uh, you know, help them as far as you can. But what do we think clients are going to ask of their agencies in the second half of the year as hopefully plans become more focused and structured? Um, and I'll ask Chris that straight off because he is on the brand side. Chris, well, what, what are you looking for from the agencies you work with in the second half of the year in terms of both process and actually implementation? Yeah, it is, it is a difficult one, isn't it? Um, um, as I said, we, we do work with an awful lot of different agencies in different countries and you know, they'll, they'll have different ideas. But for, for, again, personally to Belron, it's, it's all about trying to understand where the market is really at. So yes, we are, we are maybe out of TLC or, or you know, open heart surgery right now, but we are into you know, proper healthcare and growth and um, trying to understand uh, if, if, if the agencies can help us to get a really good grip on what the true state of the market is, what our share is, what we need to do to, to improve that share. Um, I mean, a lot, a lot of these things have, have always been the case, you know, any, any agency that can help us understand those things, it's, it's always been useful. But right now, it's, it's, it's harder than ever to get the answers to those questions. Um, so I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, about the research side of things, um, but, but very, very focused research on um you know on, on growth and on um market size uh consumer behaviors just just one little example we we brought uh brought in a new product so we are able to sanitize the inside of the car um using disinfectant and foggers and things like that and we've, we've gone through product development uh pricing um operations fitting in in about four or five weeks right through to now being able to advertise it but we've almost missed the, mo the boat on that you know consumers are just not really interested in that as a new product they're, they're sort of yeah great you can sanitize tick but they're not interested in it as a new product so, so that that's something that um you know if if we'd known that or if we were able to know that really quickly we can make decisions um yeah so it's trying to truly understand this this market that still appears to be changing well, that makes sense i mean Pedro, from your perspective uh, as both uh total media and as chair of the, of the ipa new business group and marketing group what what do you think clients are going to want from agencies going forward now 
I think, um, I mean, Chris is absolutely right. It hasn't changed. I think what they want um, is, is a, a partner to support them. And I think as an agency and a good agency, we've always had our finger on the pulse to understand what's happening in the market, what's happening with the consumers and working with the client to understand what's happening within the business. And once you've got those three areas, it should always be a proactive evolving um, theme. And I think um, the change of what's, what we've seen in the last 14 weeks or so, I think that's no difference, but we're just looking at it again through that lens. So for me, it's always been making sure that you're a partner in that sense. And it's not about trying to uh, still share some other agencies or anything like that, but actually just providing them what you're good at. This is what we're good at. This is what we can provide you. And this is the intel and what it looks like to help support your business and working collaboratively with the other agency partners. Okay. Um, would you, from the conversation you have with clients at Adam and Eve, anything you'd, you'd add to what you think clients will be looking for as we move into the second half of the year? I mean, no, I, I completely agree with Chris and Pedro. I think that they um, uh, are after what they've always been after, which is brilliant creative ideas that solve their problems. Um, obviously, their problems are going to be different post-COVID, um, but I hope that they're after the same creative thinking and problem solving. Um, and that's what we do and we do best. Okay, that all, that all makes sense. Um, now, talk about acting and, and reacting, and, and it's a sad state of affairs, but obviously there may be, as has already been mentioned um, by Pedro, kind of another round of furloughing uh, within agencies and at clients. I think this is a question from, from Hugh Wigley to probably to Pedro and to Mima. With, with the furlough schemes coming to an end, more and more BD people, business development people, might be that threat of, uh, of being made redundant. Do you think that's a short-sighted move, really, uh, given you know, agency cash flow, that uh, the BD team should be kept at full strength and resilience, or is it something that can be ratcheted down to get that and uh, Jemima, do you want to take that first? Yeah, I mean, I can't comment on um, other businesses' actions and, um, you know, every agency or company um, has a different new business team uh, structure. Um, we're quite lean, but other, um, other competitors of ours have much bigger teams. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I, you know, and I'm sorry to hear that that's the case um, because obviously um, to grow, you need those people driving growth. Um, in terms of um, opportunities with existing clients, I mean, we're finding that uh, our clients are cutting fees more than offering up um, fee. Uh, so I, I think it will be as important to look for new clients and new brands. And I'm quite um, comforted by um, some of the AAR's uh, research that they've been doing every week um, throughout lockdown, which is monitoring um, the agency landscape and the opportunities coming through. Um, and actually, like the market is is fairly buoyant. Um, there are opportunities. Um, so you know, it, it didn't completely shut down. So there are those opportunities there. So yes, I mean, agencies should be investing in those teams to grab hold of them when they come along. Pedro, would you have any observation? Yeah. On to the BD team its role at this point in time. Yeah, I think, I think, look, um, it depends on the company, right? I think, uh, I completely agree with Jemima. I think there is a short side to this to it because you do need, in times like this, you need a, even more support in making sure that you're reaching uh, the right brands, the right consumers, and actually talking to them the right way because um, each company and each brand and each agency brings something unique to a client's business. And actually, it's identifying what uniqueness you're bringing to specific clients and where you can add value. And, you, and it helps to have someone on that. But I, I mean, I can't answer generally because I, I don't know every business situation. But for me personally, I think it's short-sighted and I think BDs are more important than they've ever been. That's music to everyone's ears, I should imagine, in this particular forum. Um, okay, staying with the, with the theme of, of looking ahead and planning, it's, it's, we are in summer, allegedly. Um, you know, normally that's a bit of downtime. Normally August is, is a quiet period for, for many businesses, not everyone. Um, curious to know how each of your businesses, be it clients or agency, are planning for the summer and, and do you expect to actually find some pent up demand coming through and some business pipeline reactivating over what is usually a quiet period just because it has been delayed so much. Um, Chris, what's your structure for the summer? I mean, how are you approaching those summer months? 
Yeah, so the, the summer's generally pretty busy for us, actually. Certainly, the, the sort of early summer, June, July, is, is quite a peak. Maybe it's as people are um, kind of getting ready for their vacation. I mean, a lot of our business in Europe goes a little bit quiet in August, as most of France goes off for several, several weeks. Um, but we do have that peak before. And as I was saying before, I think one of our questions is what's happening this year? You know, is, is everybody going to go away on, on holiday or not? Um, is, is the level of recovery that we're seeing at the moment, is it going to just stall and, and level out in, in probably around August? Um, we're, we're still having to balance operations. You know, we still have people on furlough in the, you know, the sharp end of the business um, and we're gradually bringing them back until we're up to full strength. So we're having to balance that that sort of that cash flow of do we do we get everybody back because we think the demand is going to come back and and therefore we also need to be advertising to make sure the uh, the demand does come back. Um, so that, that 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 balance at the moment is uh, is is pretty tricky. I I honestly don't know what what August is going to look like. I, I hope it's going to be very strong. Um, I think the other thing is that the people who have not been on furlough are actually pretty tired right now. You know, they, um, they've been working flat out since March, often covering several jobs. Um, so they're probably going to have to, you know, almost be encouraged to take some leave. So we're going to have to manage that quite carefully as well. well they're very good points. They're really good points indeed. Uh, Pedro, how are you going to structure uh, the telemedia approach over the summer months? Um, I think some of our clients, I mean, we, we talked about green shoots. So some of our clients, um, as Chris mentioned, it's, the, the media market is very soft. So actually investment has been really beneficial. So you, you're buying TV almost at half the price as an example. And I think, um, so they've taken advantage of that. And that includes planning for the summer. But it, I think it depends. I mean, a few brands are still waiting to see what happens. There's still a bit of nervousness on the market, in the market. So it's really a sort of brand by brand, case by case example. And we're certainly not seeing any consistency in what all brands are doing, but just rather segments of it. Okay. And, and Jemima, how, how are you going to structure the teams at Adam and Eve and, and what approach you take to those summer months that are normally? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with Pedro in terms of there's not that much consistency um, and it's kind of a, an unknown um, few months ahead. Um, I said uh, just a minute ago that the market, the new business market was fairly buoyant but um those sort of the the emails and the interests and the approaches uh don't necessarily lead into a full-on pitching opportunity there's a lot of people sort of testing the waters and maybe you know they've actually got more time on their hands uh, to start uh reaching out to agencies and seeing what's you know playing with briefs and seeing what's out there um i think traditionally uh, the summer months have been slightly quieter on the pitch front um, because clients are on holiday, you know, with their kids. But I think, you know, this summer they're going to have their kids with them more than ever before. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an unknown, really. We're just kind of taking every week at a time. Um, yeah. No, that's, again, it's an interesting point that we've not experienced before. You're right. We haven't had the, the cheer of the kids around so much as we kind of have. Um, so what does that mean for those working practices and what team resource you can call on and when? That's it, it, pretty interesting. Um, we touched on summer. It'd be remiss of me not to look ahead to Q4, which is, you know, for many businesses, not every business, but for many businesses, is a make or break quarter. And marketing's role in that, of course, as well. And, and the, um, the marketing around the seasonal advertising and the seasonal messages. Um, it's going to be so hard to get that tone of voice right. And many brands normally plan their Christmas campaigns about this point in time, Christmas in July, as it's sometimes called. So I'd be interested in your, in your viewpoints, just from all the experience of your accumulated working life in, in the agency and marketing world, what kind of tone of voice of campaign or tone of voice of approach brands are likely to take when we hit the Christmas period? Um, I just want to reference um, the quote from James Murphy, um, I'm sure Jemima remembers. Uh, who was the founder of Adam and Eve DDB and has just launched a new agency called New Commercial Arts. Um, we have a podcast at Propeller called The Dog and Bone and our latest episode just out interviews James where he says um, a lot of the advertising we've recently seen in the, in the COVID period it comes with huge sentimental bells on. It's almost like Christmas has come early 
a lot of emotional territory around the COVID period has already been experienced and it could be difficult to deal with another huge sugar rush of sentimentality when Christmas rolls round. So just curious to know how you think brands are going to approach Christmas. Is it, are, are we going to go for a sparkly, upbeat tinsel? Are we going to go for more sentiment? Are we played out on that? Is it going to be promotions and product offers because people are economically hard pressed? Um, your take would be very useful, I'm sure. Um, Chris, have you got any views at all based on your lifetime experience in marketing? Yeah, so I mean, as I said, we, we don't tend to have a, uh, Christmas is not, you know, our high season um, and we don't tend to do Christmas ads. However, we we want certainly want to finish the young. Um, we tend to do direct response advertising. So when we advertise, we get more business. So, so we sort of end the year strongly. In terms of the tone of voice that, that you were saying, um, this is my personal opinion, but I, I, I think uh, um, we've, we've had enough of, you know, shaky zoom car uh, camera work and um you know everyone pitching in together and, and having a lovely time and, and uh virtual tea parties and we just had enough we, we kind of want to get back to normal um tell us what the offer is tell us what the you know <laughs> tell us what the brand is, is trying to say um even things like as i mentioned earlier we've you know we've got this sanitization products didn't really fly um people just want to know you know are you open great obviously you keep your distance and you and you wipe down the surfaces great but but you know what's the deal what's the offer what's the call to action so um yeah i i i, I suspect it'll be a return to normality will be what people are perhaps craving that's that's my personal view okay and Pedro, you're the man with the behavioral insights um what, what do you think the the consumers are want in their christmas marketing the messages they want to hear and how they want to be played to them um i think i mean you you both said it already in terms of it's um a, a bit of return to normal but it's an emotion i mean emotion drives consideration and um christmas has always been about that emotion i think it's not i don't think it's going to change dramatically yes some of the, the messages might be slightly different but ultimately i mean well I'm, I'm, we're not creative agency but we know that emotion drives success and drives saliency and drives all the things that brands need to help grow and deliver success. So for me, that's definitely where they're going to head. Well, could you have a guess at what kind of emotion? I mean, are we talking about upbeat, tinsel and the general Christmas trappings or the kind of more sentimental, emotional kind of play out? For that, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> you literally, we're just going to be having a guess. But no, I, I, I think you're better off talking to a creator agency about that one. Hello, funnily enough, we have one in the building, but where um, Jemima might not be in a position to fully comment. Anything you'd like to say at all about Christmas advertising, Jemima? Um, I mean, I can't comment on any of our clients or what they're up to, but from like a personal point of view, um, it's only June and I'm exhausted. Um, you know, it's been, it's only really June. It feels like it's been much longer. I think by the time we get to Christmas, I think I'll want something a bit uplifting and celebratory and that's what Christmas is all about. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see, um, how the different brands approach it. Um, yeah, watch the space. Well, we'll see which brands sign up. Um, is it Captain Tom, Colonel Tom, um, as their brand ambassador for Christmas? Um, the time is ticking on. I'd be remiss if I didn't but uh, one more question that's very important to BD practitioners uh, to the panel, and that is about approaches. Um, and I know Chris has already touched on this a little bit, uh, so I'm going to ask Chris first. Um, what, what kind of, if you can answer this, what kind of volume of approaches are you getting from agencies, Chris? Are you still getting a huge volume? And how do you prefer to be approached? Uh, you know, what gets cut through from a, a, an agency that might like to have a conversation with you? Um, yeah, I think the volume is pretty much the same level as it used to be. C certainly for the sort of maybe the, the, not the full agency pitches, but for the, you know, services like, you know, email service providers, conversion rate optimization, those kind of things. I, I think that's coming in as thick and fast as it ever did. Um, in, in terms of full agency, uh, we probably don't we don't change very often so I, I 
I tend not to see those, you know, unless we are actually actively involved. Um, but for everything in, in terms of approach, um, I am a huge fan of referrals. Um, that's, that's how I tried to do things myself when I was uh, in BD. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you are going to approach someone on, on LinkedIn and, and you know, things like that, which is, is kind of one of the few channels available these days, if, you, if you're not going to have, uh, you know, face-to-face -face random connections, um, just be, be relevant or ask the question first, you know, is, is this at all in your area of interest or shall I go away now? And also, if, if the answer is go away now, just, just respect that because, um, you know, we, we are trying to do a lot with fewer people in, in a shorter time scale at the moment. So uh, re respect the no, I would say, and, and move on to the next one. Jemima, um, well, what's the kind of overarching new business approach you're taking at Admin Eve at the moment in terms of kind of outbound? Sorry, in terms of? What, 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 what's, what's, your, what's a new business approach at the moment? Is it just targeting warm prospects or is there a kind of overarching cold prospect? Um, we're pretty conflicted actually um, across our, uh, definitely our sort of UK portfolio. Um, so, um, in terms of growing, um, we're definitely looking, um, at how we can grow our global client base, um, and how we can, um, utilize our network and the opportunities, um, there are to work on global clients that our sister agencies work on. Um, but yeah, no, we, I mean, we're, we're still seeing the same level of maybe, maybe not as slightly as much, but the same level of approaches um from clients so it's you know that we, we apply the same um same thoughts to um how we proceed with them you know are they a creative opportunity are they uh or are they a financial opportunity um and are they nice people to work with and ideally that they'd be all three um but as long as you're covering off a couple then they are um the ones to kind of find out more about good, good. And, and pedro finally back to you i guess and the approach to, to new business and how selective are you being and how are you making those approaches, especially as we don't have that, those face-to-face -face opportunities now, be it events or smaller type forums. Well, I'm going to stop sending out those conversion rate optimization emails because they're obviously not working. But I think, um, well, no, realistically, I think for us, it's, it's exactly what I think what we, we all know and what we've all talked about. And um, relationships are really important. We know that. We know that referrals generate the best type of lead because you've been recommended and someone uh, tried and tested. But for us, it's actually a bit like Jemima, we're sort of going through a um, segmentation analysis of, of where and what and who, because um, we also do a lot of international business and we have lots of strengths in lots of different areas. So it's where do we provide the most value? Where would we get the most return? And how do we target? I mean, we still have, there's still leads coming in, which is great. The pipeline is still there. Um, but it's more about actually making sure that if we're proactively going out to the market, what is it that we're offering? Because it goes back to the point that we, we made earlier, we all made earlier, which was, um, unless you're providing some sort of real relevance, it's no point just cold calling, cold emailing someone said, are you looking for a new agency? But if you can go, look, I can see you've got this challenge. I reckon this could solve it. Can we have five minutes to have a conversation? And if you think there's value in continuing, let's carry on. I think that's where we're seeing the value. And so we're going through that process now as well. Wise words, Pedro. Um, that's probably my time as, as an interrogator over now. So I'm going to hand back to Ali. But thank you so much for taking on the questions and answering them honestly. Thank you very much. Ali. Thank you all. A round of applause for all the speakers and Director of Content here at Propeller Group, Bramwell. Johnson. And that is the end of BD Sessions. Thank you so much for joining. I'm about to disappear into my own background. So I do hope you guys have a fantastic evening. I just want to say a couple things before we sign off. Uh, one is that the Dog and Bone episode that was mentioned here, fantastic podcast that we run here at Propeller Group. We get advertising media heavyweights on to discuss the final things about media land and more. And that is a link that I've just put in the chat there. So if you want to click and listen to and catch up to any of the fantastic speakers that we've had on, then please do do that now. Um, another thing is, as Jody mentioned, we're now a propeller group. So if you've got any uh, BD content events or PR needs, please do get in touch with any of us here at Propeller. We'd always be happy to chat and have another Zoom meeting. I won't host it. They're not going to let me do anything more after this. 
So uh, please do in, enjoy your evenings and thank you very much. We will be back in another, guys. Uh, but for now, the BD Sessions is over. Uh, appreciate everyone who's joined in and you guys to join in the last one before summer. So please do have a fantastic July. Thank you very much. I've been Ali Woods. You can check me out on social media. But for now, goodbye. Take care.